This is Senior Pastor Larry McCord, pastor of New Birth Christian Ministries Incorporated, located on Long Island, New York, reaching out to you wherever you may hear the sound of my voice, sending out the Word of God. I know many of you are troubled today, but you don't need to be afraid because you're God's property. And he said, no weapon formed against you will prosper. This is taken from Isaiah 54, verse 17. The only thing you can rely on is the word of God. Tune in and listen to New Birth Christian Ministries on YouTube channel. I look forward to seeing you. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father God, I ask that you fill me up with the Holy Spirit so that I can pour out the word from on high from you today. Give us this day our daily bread in the form of my message. I pray that it's all of you and none of me hide my flesh behind behind the cross of calvary in jesus holy mighty matchless name i pray amen so the title of my sermon is or my message is why we fast during lent i'm going to tell you why some christians honor the season of lent and then i'll tie in the woman's, the women's role fasting in the Bible. I would first like to read the scripture. This is coming from Mark 1, 9 through 13, the NIV version of the Bible. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. The 40 days of fasting represents Jesus' time in the wilderness. He was tempted by Satan. Therefore, when we think about Lent, we think about trying to draw closer to God. How many of you want to hear from God this is whom I love and whom I am well pleased. I don't think that there's anybody on this at this service or on the Facebook Live or on Zoom who doesn't feel that way. It's because we want to draw closer to God that we look to Lent, this Lentil season, it's it's a it's a situation where we have to draw close to God. We should be trying to draw close to God every day, but there's something about the lentil season. There's something about the upcoming cross of Calvary that we've grown to love and and expect and respect. So 40 days does not seem like a lot of time to fast to give up anything. It doesn't have to be food. It can be anything. I personally give up watching television during the day until six o'clock or after six o'clock because the things on the news can really tear you apart and it can impede your walk with Christ. So it's important to have at least some time set aside that you just have to have fellowship with God, just like you would have fellowship with a sibling or your parent or parents. You want to be able to commune and look to God just at that me time, as that me time, along with 
Fasting comes prayer because without prayer, fasting is just dieting. Or if you're giving up watching television, like I did, it's just becomes a, a ritual. It doesn't mean anything. So you should get up early in the morning. This is something I struggle with. I always tell my children or my kids in school, they're not children, they're college age. I always tell them to be transparent. And so I'm being transparent with you. I do not like to get up early, but lately he's been waking me up six o'clock, seven o'clock and telling me to get into his work. That comes with practice, patience and perseverance. The three P's. It's not about doing a duty. Lent is not about trying to impress anybody. You don't, you're not walking around showing people that you're fasting or that you're doing something or anything for God. What's done in private is done in private. Jesus said, he told the Pharisees and the Sadducees, don't go and stand at the marketplace and tear your clothes and render your garments because what good is that? It's like when you have a, a have new jewelry as a gift and you go stand on a corner to show off your new jewelry sometimes it's best to keep your gift to yourself because guess what somebody's going to take come and take your jewelry from you so you don't want to mishandle your joy and there's joy in prayer there's joy in fasting there's joy in whatever you give up to God, but it just has to be between you and he. It does not have to be for the whole world to know. So let's talk about being tempted. So of course, Jesus was tempted when he went into the wilderness to fast and fasted and to draw closer to his father. Jesus was tempted because Satan thought that he could get that fleshly body that fleshly self to rise up and he thought that he would be able to convince jesus to eat the bread because he was fasting how many of you try to fast and you have difficulty because all of a sudden brother mike sends you a video with pictures of plates of food don't worry brother mike i'm not fasting food Yes, temptation. it's temptation. How many of you have ever gone out with your male or female friend and seen somebody that looked really, really good to you? That's temptation. Mm -hmm. We know that that happened with David and Bathsheba. It's temptation. He had all of those women in his concubine as his concubines not need one more beautiful she was or how nice her body was he did not need one more but he wanted you have to be careful to mix up not to mix up your wants and your needs come on i appreciate it because now you own it now right? because what you want is generally tainted not good for you. it's not good for you Preach. but what you need is the Holy Spirit telling you that you have to survive by this measure? You need to eat, except for when you're fasting in prayer. But you need to pray when you're fasting in prayer because otherwise you'll get hungry and you'll get tempted. So Jesus set the precedent for us by fasting and praying in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, I'm not telling anybody to run out and fast for 40 days and 40 nights, because if you're not used to fasting, then it's not going to go well for you. You'll have all types of trouble. However, when you do fast, make sure that you pray. It's important to pray. And I'll be repeating myself at, at, time at, at a time, because there, there are things that are important for you to know. I'm going to repeat verse 12 in chapter one, in Mark chapter one. At once, 
the spirit sent him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended to him. If you fast and you pray and you're steadfast in your perseverance, then angels will come and tend to you, attend to you. The angels will gladly help you out and they will keep you from being tempted. Read Psalm 91 when you get a chance. It will bless you greatly because we are under the wings of the almighty God. The wings of God are literal wings, but it shows that he covers you. He covers you not only with his spirit, but he covers you in the blood of Jesus. Those of us who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. That is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come and come with fasting and weeping and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in, in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. That's taken from Joel uh, chapter two, verse 12 through 13. That was the New Living Testament. It is, when you are tempted, you have to trust God and go to God. That's all he wants you to do. He wants you to have a relationship with him that you can feel comfortable going to him and telling him, listen, he already knows what your heart is saying. So tell them, tell them the truth. Be honest. God, I really, really wanted to eat because I saw a plate of food that wet my appetite. But I'm asking you for strength so that so that you can help me get through this. We used to fast every Wednesday at a church I belonged to. And every Wednesday, somebody would come to work with some type of pizza or something that would, that would really stir my juices, get my juices going. And I would have to ask God, please strengthen me because I'm about to give in. I'm not Jesus. I'm not saying that I would have taken the bread from the devil because I probably would have known who he was. I hope I would have known who he was. But he comes as an angel of light. He can be who you least expect. He can come to you all frillied up, gussied up, face shining, and you think that he has your best interests at heart. Turn, God, the Lord says, turn to me now. While there is time, you heard Pastor Lavi say that there's a somebody's finger is on the button, and I believe he means Putin. And it's not a joke. There will be some who survive, but you have to have faith and trust in God. If you survive, then it's going to be a hard road. It's not going to be easy. If God puts up his hand and says, let me 
stop the missiles from arriving at this place. But America has to wake up. We need to begin again to fast and pray. Some Christians already do it, but we need to really pay attention to what's going on in the world and pray because we don't know, like Pastor Larry said, we don't know the hour or the time. Humble, humble, be humble, humble yourselves. I have to pull, I have to talk about Sister Sandy for a minute because I had no idea that she did all of the stuff, half of the stuff that she's done. So that means that she's been humble because that is the epitome of being humble. She's not walking around with great robes and fancy clothes and saying, oh, I'm the muckety muck of the muck. I'm the great muck of the muck. She is really accepting what God gave her to do. What She's accepting God's gifts and using them to the best of her ability. And that ability stretches wide. Fast anything that impedes your walk with God. I know we are way into Lent at this point. I think it started on Wednesday. So if you can, I'm sure God will understand. Think of something that is impeding your walk and fast. Fast anything that means more to you than God, that you've made an idol. Now I'm going to get through or get to the women's part of this journey. Anna fasted for the redemption of Jerusalem through the coming Messiah. That's in Luke 2.37. And you heard Sister or Deaconess Karen read that scripture. There was also Esther. Esther was a Jew, but she was faking it till she made, till she was making it. And she ended up being King Xertus or is it King Zotus or Oxidus? I don't remember. She ended up being his queen. And her cousin Mordecai, who raised her from a child, reminded her that this, this is not what you were brought up as. You were not brought up to be forgetting about your people, but possibly you were brought up for such a time as this. You'll hear me say that a lot, for such a time as this, because we're living in a world now. I wondered why I was born in this dispensation and time, why I wasn't born a slave, why I wasn't born to wealthy people. But I was put here, you were put here, we were all put here for such a time as this. So the interesting thing is Purim, which is the holiday that Esther, that was in place because of Esther's strong will. Okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. She fasted for 40, for three days and three nights, not 40. I don't think they had time for that. In order for her people to not be annihilated, which was the king's decree, because of a devil in his ranks. Call it as I see it. There's devils out there. There's devils doing Satan's job on this earth. He has his minions in place. Amen. So he had this guy try to annihilate or genocide these people who were not harming him in, in the least. Kind of sounds like Putin, right? All through the Bible, if you read the Bible well, you'll see that this is nothing new. This has been going on since the beginning of time. I digress. So Esther went before her king without permission. 
you had to give a certain amount of, of time before you went before him. You weren't allowed to go before him just any old kind of way, kind of like God, right? You should not go before him any old kind of way. That's just a tip. So Esther went before him, and that's when she told Mordecai that she didn't feel comfortable doing this. I'm getting to a point here. <laughs> so Mordecai, that's when Mordecai told her, who knows that you were put here for such a time as this? Because our people will go on. We have people all over the world, but your family will be annihilated. So whose side are you going to be on? He didn't say this because God is never mentioned in the book of Esther, but he was saying, whose side are you on? Are you on God's side or are you on the king's side? Because who is ultimately your sovereign king? Isn't it God? So I want you to think about this as you are fasting and praying. Think about whose side are you on? So Esther ended up saving her people. If you want to read about the whole story, it's better than any soap. You can read the book of Esther. It's, she actually has her own book. Right, exactly, exactly. Pastor said, one book is so true. Snuck through. Oh, one book snuck through. <laughs> one woman's book made it in. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Actually, Ruth also. She has her own book. However, they were put in, I believe, to soup the men up. I don't think that they were put in because... They eliminated many women. So she was able to save her people. And what came out of it was a time of feasting. And it's really interesting that her story, pure or Purim is what they call the time of feasting. It came, it's coming in the month of March for Women's Month this time usually is February or it's, it's between February and March. And I think that that's interesting too. Black History Month. <laughs> yes, yes. That is what they feast with. They feast with sweets. Think about when we end our period of fasting, what do we feast with? We feast with sweets right? Chocolate bunnies and chocolate eggs, or some of us do. I used to feast with chocolate eggs. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait for the holiday, which some of you call Easter. I couldn't wait for it because that meant that I would be able to partake of chocolate and sweets. It's very interesting that Purim is also celebrated with eating sweets. So as you think about Lent, don't think about it as just 40 days before Easter. Don't think about it as 40 days before Resurrection Sunday. Think about it as a time of drawing close to God. If you remember, Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan by his cousin, John the Baptist, before he was sent out into the wilderness. So it's important to pray prior to fasting. It's important to look to God for your answers on how you should fast. Don't try to fast just, just for the sake of fasting. Because that's never good. That never works. And when you're tempted, Sister Sandy said, to lose weight, don't fast to lose weight. When you're tempted, make sure you take it to God because He's the only one 
that can get you through. Amen. I'm going to do the bread coming from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For those of you who have the bread, I'm having a little difficulty getting mine open. So we could go on. Next slide, please. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Drink, Sister Sonia. Well, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, I will be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth, on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us give this, us this day, day our daily bread. And give and us, forgive us for our trespasses. As we forgive as we those, forgive those trespass who trespass against, trespass against us. Lead, lead us not to temptation. Not into temptation. But us from evil. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Glory forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you, Evangelist Thea. Amen. Let's give the speaker a hand cap for a very edifying sermon today. Many times we forget that the reason Jesus Christ preached and taught was what he was saying was a different message than the one in the temple. And that while they continuously did the same thing every year to cover their sins, what they were providing were temporary. It's kind of like if you have a headache and you take an aspirin, you might not feel the pain, but the cause of the pain is still there. Jesus came to deliver the good news that his father had sent him down. This is Pastor Larry McCord. Thank you for attending our services here at Newburgh. We appreciate your contribution and support. Please visit us here in person as well as on Zoom. May the blessings of the Lord go with you and go in peace.